Welcome, I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Adrian Peace Williams. Hi Adrian. Hi Pam. Hi. How's it going? It's going wonderfully. Adrian, okay. if people don't know, um, is one of my friends Alex's daughters and I will say I've enjoyed getting little updates over the years as to what she's been up to <laughs> and I'm thrilled that she agreed to come on the podcast to talk about her experience growing up unschooling. So to get us started Adrian, can you just share a little bit about you and your family? Yes, um, I grew up in Nova Scotia and I have two sisters. I'm the middle child and I'm 24 the moment um yeah I guess I was homeschooled up until I was uh 15 and then I decided to go to public school and I did that um and that was a whole adventure and then I am attending university um yeah, we live in the woods. I love being outside and reading books and learning and love my sisters dearly and my parents as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, so what were some of your interests growing up and how did you pursue them? Mm -hmm. So it changed, of course, as I grew up, but when I was well, I guess a theme for my whole life has been the outdoors. Mm -hmm. That was a big one for me when I was little too. And luckily I did grow up um, surrounded by woods in a pretty rural location. So I was able to go outside all the time and play in the woods. And my parents would uh, facilitate that and bring home books um, on trees and birds and plants. And I would kind of look at them and, you know, oh, this is cool, but mostly just wanted to be outside. But now I am valuing those books a little bit more and more turning towards the books. I'm like, okay, I want to know all the details now. Uh, so being outside was kind of an easy one. I could just be outside. Mm -hmm. um, I also loved drawing and painting. And so I would do that a lot as a kid. And mom would often take us to art galleries so I could see different paintings. And we had painting board games where we can, you know, pretend it's like a art auction kind of thing. We actually just played that the other day too. Yes, Masterpiece. <laughs> yes. I love that. Kids love that um, game. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we just draw and paint a lot. And I went to a lot of art camps as well. Um, so we could kind of choose what camps in the summer we wanted to go to. And I would usually go to the visual arts and also theater too. I really enjoyed being um, in theater. And so I took some improv classes. And again, mom and dad would kind of be like, okay, these are all these classes that we can take. And here are your options and I would always cho choose an arts uh, one usually I took a painting class and uh, as I got older I got involved in community theater in my community which was amazing one of them is just uh, it's a woman's group where they put on a kind of variety show every year and the profits go to women's charities that they mm -hmm. pick so I love that um, I liked to read too so I would read a lot and or would get mom and dad to read to me until I loved reading so much that I could actually sit for so long and get read to that mom and dad like okay I can't read to you anymore I'm too anyway. tired so <laughs> it would be like six like I would want them to sit there for like six hours and just <laughs> read to me so eventually I got more into audiobooks and then just reading to myself I remember um, that transition for my daughter, yeah. Lissy, too, because um, I was reading the Harry Potter books to them yes. for the longest time for hours. And then, like, my voice would go and, and even water wasn't <laughs> yeah. helping it. And then we found the audiobooks at the library. And then, like, hours. She could just go for hours and hours yeah. and hours and listen. That yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think those were my my main things that I love but of course just playing games and hanging mm -hmm. with family and canoeing I loved camping too and I would always if there was an option of like hey what do we want to do as a family I would always choose to all go camping together and be outside and um nature awareness camps too those mm -hmm. I loved uh, learned mm -hmm. a lot through them 
That's awesome. So was there a time over the years that you found your unschooling lifestyle challenging? So I was just wondering if you might talk about maybe a challenge that you came across and how you moved through that. Yeah, I was thinking about this question um, because, of course, life is challenging. Yeah, and it's yeah. also hard to separate, okay, is this because I was homeschooled or unschooled or is this just because life is It's true. It just hard, becomes about living. Kind of right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, no, it's true. And I think I thought about my transitions in mm -hmm. life. Um, and those I think have been the hardest times for me in terms of like transitioning from, you know, when I chose to go to high school, I was kind of, I was like 15 and kind of felt like, okay, I need something more, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. And so how do I move forward through that of like, okay, what I'm doing right now isn't quite working. How do we figure that out? And then once I did graduate high school again, like, okay, I've done this stage in my life. What's next? And then after traveling a lot, then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to not travel, but what's the next thing? So it was like these transitions that I think have been the points in my life where I'm like, yeah, that was kind of hard to go through that. And I think the things that helped me were remembering what brings me joy and what my values are and giving myself time to listen to myself. Like I think I've learned that I personally take a lot of time to come to decisions sometimes and it's important for me to give myself that time and to remember that it's okay and it's okay to make a mistake or decide something and start it and be like no this actually that. is not the right thing <laughs> and then do something else and maybe that keeps happening and then eventually it'll be, you'll it's find like you, it and you'll love it. Yeah. You kind of hone in on things over time, but through your experiences, right? But I think that time piece is such an important um, point because you do have to keep giving yourself permission because that's not something society kind of in general supports, does it? It's like, no, boom, boom, boom. Right? No. Yeah. And I think in those transition periods, everyone, or sometimes I can feel this pressure of like, okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I think remembering to kind of protect myself from that and be, I don't, you know, I'm going through my own journey right now and that's okay. And I don't need to, you know, please these people in society that think I need to be doing this or doing that. Yeah. But I think giving myself time and, and just remembering, yeah, what, what brings me joy and trying to follow those things, trying to follow those paths. Yeah, I'll, I think that's such a such a great observation about what is what works for you, and yeah, giving knowing that it's okay to not know, and that it's okay to just kind of follow that joy, and say, okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I think that might bring it for bring something into my life that I'll, I'll value. And then it's like, Oh, nope, that's not was I, yeah. what I was kind of looking for out of that experience. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I'll yeah. Over here and here. Yeah. Cause we are, I think as a society kind of goal obsessed, right. You know, that I need to know where I'm going and I need to doggedly pursue that all the time. And yeah. that to change my mind or to make, uh, you know, mistakes are just, yeah some horrific thing, you know, yeah. rather than just life experience and me getting to know myself better and what brings me joy better. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cause I think I always thought, well, if I'm doing something that makes me happy, I'll probably make the world a little more happy because I'll be happy and that will just be spread. It trickles you know? so out. I thought no. That was a good way to guide myself. Oh, but I think that it might be different for other people too. Oh Yeah. And all, all you can share is your own experience, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, you mentioned that you, you know, it was one of those transition pieces where you decided to try out high school. So I just, can you talk a little bit more about that experience for people? You know, mm -hmm. um, parents might be curious about how you found that transition. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting, actually, and relatively easy, I guess. I think I was at a point where, um, yeah, I'd kind of, a couple friends had moved away and I was kind of lacking in my social community, I think. And um, 
I had a couple friends that were in high school and thought, you know what, this could be interesting. Like, why not just try this? Try and I think I, I went into it with a very casual mindset, which going back, I think is a very interesting thing. And not a lot of people maybe have that experience with high school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, just, it was like a, like, it's like a summer camp or like a class, you know, like, I'll just try this and see how it goes. And if I don't like it, I can just stop because... I'm getting a perfectly great education because I can just can. And so I think having that um, relaxedness, I guess, or relaxation around it was really helpful. I didn't feel a lot of pressure necessarily. Um, but I did, f I, I think I had some misconceptions about high school. Like I thought, okay, these people have been, you know, in class, like learning their whole life. Like, am I, I was, I had this interesting, I was curious to see what our, kind of skills levels, I guess, or my skill level would be, because we were very free in terms of our structure of learning, which is very different than high school. But I, when I went, I kind of, I just picked classes that I thought I would be interested in, which were some art and some drama and some like food science, I think, and like an ocean science class. Um, and I realized that I know how to learn and they're teaching. And so it was actually really easy. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> you just need to know how to listen and like how to take notes or how to ask questions and, you know, how to talk to people and have fun. I was like, I got this. I know these things. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and yeah, so it was, it was really cool, I think, that I got to have that experience. Um, I also had a lot of help too. Like, my older sister was also transitioned to high school and she was there and I did have some good friends there. So they were able to kind of, I did know people. I wasn't going into this totally new space. Mm -hmm. And my teachers also were amazing because um, my spelling and reading was not at the level as my other peers. And they could have been much harder on me, I think, about my spelling. But I think they knew that I understood all the material and just like, and they could see that it was getting better. And it was, I like, guess, I found that, yeah, it, it easily got better really quickly and was fine. So I also had lots of help from my community with that transition um, and met lots of great people too. But I also had, yeah, I think I, it was interesting to get to know a lot of people my own age um, because I think homeschooling, I had a lot of friends that were a bit older and a bit younger and kind of would usually hang out in a group of a multi-aged people. Mm -hmm. And so now it's kind of, you know, put into this, like, okay, we're all the same age. We're all at this, like, same, um, yeah, age, I guess. And it was interesting. I think I, yeah, I realized that Nova Scotia, where I grew up, is a different place, too. I was exposed to a very different community, which I, I really valued. And I think it made me realize that... I knew myself a lot better than I thought I did or I didn't even realize that I knew myself but when I was with a lot of other people that I think were still learning who they were it made me realize oh I've had this time to just be with myself and not always be comparing myself to people and yeah I think I realized that I had a bigger sense of self than I knew I did um, yeah which was really interesting yeah, it was, it, I did, so I went in through, uh, at grade, halfway through grade 10, and then I did 11 and 12, um, and by year 12, I think I did end up, like, that was another hard part for me, where I think I lost a bit of the mentality that my parents tried to teach me through homeschooling, like, I think I started caring too much about the things that I didn't actually care about. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm also glad that I had that experience too because I also learned from that. Yeah. And I, I think now I know a little bit, okay, this is what a public school can be like and this is what homeschooling can be like. And now I have these two perspectives which have been really valuable in my life as well. Oh, that's so, that is so interesting. I love the way you were able to articulate that. Those are really um great pieces like to differentiate between um the different kind of lifestyles and and being able to choose it right and and to choose this 
to, to stay, to know that you could leave if you wanted to helps you um, almost be there to, to observe and to notice those things, right? Because you knew you were, I, I don't know, you just, it just feels like when it's a choice, you come to the whole experience with a different mindset, right? A more open kind of mindset. Yeah. Yeah. That helped you. Yeah, completely. Become more self-aware too about yourself within the bigger picture of it all, right? Yeah. 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 And I think it was a concept that a lot of my peers had never considered. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I was explaining, like, I'm just here to kind of try it, they were kind of like, whoa, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I was like, I don't even, yeah. I, like, <laughs> it, was, it was like some really interesting, fun conversations came out of it because it, <laughs> it was almost comical because I was like, I'm just doing this. <laughs> they were kind of like, wow, it's been my whole life. Like, yeah, whoa. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah, was oh, good. yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. So interesting. Okay, so after your high school experience, you ended up doing some extended traveling, right? Um, and that was part of that transition out again. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit about your traveling time. What is it that you loved about it? And maybe a little bit about the trips that you went on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did a lot of <laughs> traveling. And I guess it, it was a transition because I was done with high school. And I think knew that I needed to ground myself a bit. And mm-hmm. from that experience, because towards the end, it was, I was, yeah, not feeling quite myself um and yeah I was ready for a less structured learning environment as yeah I just got caught up and I was like okay I need to see the world a little bit because I traveled a bit with my family when I was young and really liked it I like seeing new places and learning new things and so like yeah traveling sounds really good because what's the rest of the world doing you know (laughs) like I'm, I'm here but what else is going on um so I went to New Zealand with uh, Unschooling Adventures, mm-hmm. just run out of the States. Um, and I went there for six weeks and it was with a, it's a youth travel program. Mm-hmm. So they organized the trip, um, but we were in charge of certain things. And the goal of it was kind of to learn how to backpack and hike and kind of travel as a young person um, and how to do that and meet other young unschoolers or people who had been in public school or just other young people who were wanting to travel and uh, learn more about the world. And it was fantastic. We backpacked across the South Island of New Zealand. So I learned how to live out of a backpack, just one and hike with it and how to pack for that and how to, you know, cook on the trail and how to navigate from different places and how to like, yeah, stay in a hostel and all these <laughs> kind of like traveling skills and also just it really reminded me that there's so many different ways to look at the world and be in the world and it it was really lovely after high school where I think my worldview narrowed at the end this really broadened it and my leaders especially were just amazing people and had great stories and great experiences that they they shared with me and I was like yes this is fantastic (laughs) like it just was perfect is what I needed and we were outside all the time hiking in the woods which I loved um so that was a great experience and after I was like okay I want to keep doing this I'm not done with this um style of learning and like and traveling I guess because I thought this is really cool to be able to just live out of a backpack and this is all you need and I like that idea of being really minimal because I think when you have less stuff maybe you're able to see more and experience more because you're not caught up in all yeah. the things that you have mm-hmm. um and but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit so I said okay let's do this on my own let's not go with a travel program and I thought that Europe was a good place to start because I think people, I kind of thought okay a lot of people speak some English but also I want to learn a bit of French and Spanish and my ancestors are from England and Wales and I thought it'd be really interesting to go to Europe and so I uh, worked at a farm for a season and went in the winter and booked my flight and packed my backpack just one (laughs) and yeah I went to Europe for three months and 
booked some work stays, some work exchanges, I should say, because I did that in New Zealand and was like, oh, this is a really cool way to get to know a place because I think it's really nice to stay with someone who lives in the place that you're visiting because I find it gets a more local perspective and you don't just feel like a tourist, you actually get to be in the place. Um, and so, yeah, I did some vault, like work exchanges on a farm and with a couple families and did some hiking and sightseeing and uh, my mom and my younger sister came to visit me for a little bit um, and I went to Spain and France and Italy and England. Wow. Uh, and it was, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was probably my most challenging trip. Uh, I learned a lot, a lot about myself because being alone in a foreign country with just a backpack, you just, there's like, <laughs> you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm just doing this, I guess, <laughs> and I need to figure it out, like, where am I going to stay, how am I going to get there, how am I going to afford that, and what am I going to eat, and I feel like I started to connect more with my cooking, because that was probably the first time that I was like really totally in charge of my own food. Mm -hmm. which was interesting because before I've been either living with my family where it's more collaborative collaborative, or traveling with a group where it's also more in a communal way and so this was like okay yeah I need to like figure out how I want to eat and cook and where am I gonna do that and hostels and you know trains and like meeting new people and speaking different languages and it was yeah I definitely learned a lot and I think my most important lesson from that trip was that people really matter to me because I went alone and I had this like okay I need to I think prove something to myself that I can do this alone and I remember standing looking at the Colosseum in Rome and being like okay this is really cool like I've seen this in tons of movies it's this extremely famous you know thing so much history but I was like but I don't have anyone to share this with so like what does this mean and it was kind of like not much like this doesn't really mean anything right now because I miss my sisters and like yeah I miss that connection of that sharing with people sharing an experience so it was really interesting yeah. yeah 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 but I think it was really good for me to go through those things alone and to realize that those connections are really important to me you know yeah, that's, isn't really that a far. wonderful way <laughs> To learn these things about ourselves, right, is to is just is to have experiences, to have experiences that, like you were talking about before, you know, these aren't mistakes or wrong. These are things we're learning along the way that make us yeah. more whole because we're learning more about ourselves, right? So now that we know more, then our next step can be towards the stuff that we know more about. Does that make sense? <laughs> totally, totally. And so, yeah my next traveling I was like okay like I want these connections I want these connections so I decided to um and I also realized that I really enjoyed learning Spanish mm -hmm. and so I went to Nicaragua and did volunteering for about six weeks in the same place because I also was in Europe and was like I'm moving around a lot and that's ended up being exhausting and I want to connect with one place and so went and did volunteering and got to know a community and people and took Spanish lessons. And that was incredible. That was awesome to like really, yeah, see into a different kind of world and yeah. speak a different language and learn how to, it was on a permaculture farm for a bit. So also following my interests of being outside and working with my hands. Um, and then also working with kids a little bit and doing art too, which are also, yeah, I like doing art. So it was teaching um, just art classes for about a week and then working on a permaculture farm for about a month. And it was lovely. I was like, this is it because I'm coming to this place and actually feeling like I'm contributing to the community a little bit instead of just being a tourist and um, which is also great to do sometimes, but it felt more meaningful to me to make those connections yeah yeah and <laughs> exactly it's all about um you know the stuff we're, we're learning about ourselves and what's meaningful to us like you said before it, it's not a judgment on other people making other choices because those are the choices that work for them right it's that 
that whole piece that you figure out that we're all individuals and as we you know step towards our joy doesn't mean that everybody else's steps need to look the same or that our steps are wrong because they look different it's a bigger picture appreciation isn't it for everybody yeah. doing what they love yes yeah, yeah. It was, yeah and I think like I came across yeah, I like how you were saying about everyone's following their own joy because a lot of my peers were going to university or college at that time mm -hmm. and that was kind of like the mainstream that everyone was going towards, but I yeah. kept choosing to not do that, I guess, and to keep working and traveling because I was working really hard in between all my trips. And I think that was kind of cool for me because it, it taught me that I can keep making my own decisions and that's okay and to keep following what I love has turned out really well yeah. and it was nice for it was like a continual affirmation I guess of yes you can keep making your own choices and everyone's doing what they want to do and you don't have to do what other people are doing or you can and that's great too but as long as it feels right in your heart yeah as as long as it's your choice right because now you've made the transition right now you're going to university right yeah. so you want to talk a little yeah. bit about that transition and how that's been going for yeah. you yeah yeah for sure so yeah now i am in university <laughs> and <laughs> there's also a certain uh relaxation about that because it's a very it's yeah, it's interesting to have been doing something that not a lot of other people are doing for, it was about five years that I was working and traveling, and then now I'm doing something where a lot of other people are doing that, and to notice, like, being in those two different worlds is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but after traveling and working, and where I had been working uh, was an organic farm, and I loved it there, and uh, when I first started working on farms, I think it was like my first job when I was 12 or something, which was like weeding or mowing a lawn. It was like just for pocket change. Yeah. Um, and I live in a rural place too, so there aren't a lot of other jobs available. Um, but over the years, yeah, I kept working on farms and a couple different farms. And this one that I've worked at for about five seasons now, I don't work there anymore, but I did. Um, Something about the farm, I think it was like the perfect size and the family is amazing, but I got to see the whole picture of the farm and I got to be a part of lots of different parts of it, um, which is something that I really like. I think my brain likes to look at the big picture and then put different pieces into it and see yeah. how it all works together. And I love being outside and working with my hands and I got to work at the farmer's market where we sell our produce and see how my work was connecting to the community which is something also I really learned that I value is like feeling like I'm helping my community and contributing to the world um, in a positive way. And because I love being outside and being in the natural world, it, I, it realized, I realized, I guess, through working through this par farm that it kind of connected a lot of the things that I love. Yeah. And, and I took a summer off and did more traveling um, in Canada. I did a road trip with my friend um, and the whole summer I was thinking about the farm, like what's <laughs> happening and what's growing and like, is this turning out? <laughs> is this, you know, and I'm like, I miss it so much. And, and I, yeah, I just realized that I love it. Um, but also that I, okay, I had been working at this one farm for a while and feeling like, okay, I want more of a challenge. I need to, I need to make a shift so that I'm taking on either more responsibility or like I'm learning more because I feel like, okay, I know how to like weed really fast. And I know how to harvest, but I want to know okay, how do I plan this and like what's happening in the soil and, you know, how do I market my produce or you know, these more theoretical or um, different than just the day-to-day -day yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking bigger picture things. And I was thinking, I think I like learning with a group um, and yeah, I kind of just came to, okay, I think university is the way that I want to learn about this. Cause I also thought about, okay, well, I could just start reading books and I can just start farming. Cause you don't really need a degree to <laughs> farm. Yeah. You can just do it and it'll work or it won't. But, yeah. um, but 
I was kind of like, no, I think I want this more structured way because I do like some structure in my learning. Um, yeah, and I wanted to be with other young people that were really into farming. farming. I have like, we can have lots of conversations and uh, yeah, so now I'm going to Trent University in Peterborough, Ontario. Uh, and I chose that program because it focuses on sustainable and alternative forms of agriculture, which is what I'm interested in instead of the more large scale uh, industrial. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I really, really like it. Uh, I was a little nervous, but more just because I was moving to a different town and a different community. Um, and yeah, I, and also kind of like, okay, I haven't been in the, kind of this system for a long time, and how is that going to go? But really, it was fine, because I think, I think I know how to learn, and I know how to reach out for help, and luckily, I have amazing parents that help me a lot, and, and the school is great, too. Like, there's so many resources that I can go to, and... Um, yeah, it's, it's been really good. I think the thing that's been important for me is to find peers that also have a similar-ish mindset around school. Mm -hmm. I find, cause, and I was kind of like, okay, what are my peers going to be like? Are they all going to be, you know, younger, more like 18, coming right, right out of high school? Will they be older? Will they be mixed? Or, um, but I found that it, it is more diverse, especially with my program. I think a lot of people come to agriculture maybe at a, a bit of an older age instead of right out of high school but it's it's a diverse group which I really appreciate because they have lots of different perspectives that we can talk about and not everyone you know wants to farm some people are just really interested in agriculture and kind of food policy and some people do want to farm and some people they want to do you know livestock or vegetables and so it is diverse which I really um, appreciate yeah that's lovely yeah. so it sounds like you're you're enjoying that so far yeah yeah, yeah. It, it feels like I feel like the program is really perfect because it's also it's not very hands-on but that's kind of great because I've already had a lot of hands-on experience and I want the like I'm taking um an organic agriculture class next semester which I think is going to talk about kind of policy and um, certification methods and then environmental implications of agriculture so kind of like okay how are agriculture and the environment related which they completely are and last semester I took world food systems so looking at like okay how does food move globally and like traded and I think that's really important for me to know and yeah it feels like every all the classes so far have been like yes this is what I need to know <laughs> like it's important for me to learn um, but I still do question whether, like, how important graduating is to me, because there are some classes that are required for my degree that I don't necessarily think will be extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm still trying to figure out, yeah, how important that piece of paper is to me and how valuable those classes will be and kind of like, okay, well, is it not interesting because I don't know anything about it or because I haven't tried it or is it like, no, I really still want to take this class. <laughs> it's like, okay, how do I work with this? Because there still is a lot of pressure from within the university to get that degree. Like, that's what the whole program that's, is setting you up to do. Yeah, that's the point. That's their but job. Me, yeah. That's their job. But I'm like, well, my point is learning. And so, and, in, and like, and, and using this information to hopefully one day apply it to my life as a person growing food for my community so there's slightly different agendas yeah. happening here and it's sometimes tricky to yeah balance Navigate them. but that. so far it's good I yeah. think it will be more towards the end of my degree kind of like yeah. okay is this well, worth it is it not and I, I don't ever want to sacrifice my time for something that I won't necessarily care about because I think towards the end of high school that is what was happening it was like I'm just doing this for someone else now not necessarily mm -hmm. myself and it so it didn't feel good so I'm I'm wary I, I guess a little bit and cautious of like okay this is what the university wants this is what I want just make sure I keep 
on <laughs> my path here. <laughs> oh, Adrian, yeah, I, just, I love all those questions you're asking yourself. That's perfect. Like, and that's how you're going to kind of feel your way through it. And I mean, in my, that's how, that's how you feel your way through life, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Really? Because yeah. there's always pushes and pulls and things from various directions. And, you know, it's like trying to, to, to really get clear on what we want out of it, what you want out of it and, and the implications, like, like, as you said, you know, that, that tendency to easily get sucked into that that even sounds too harsh almost but you know other people's agendas like they're everywhere yeah right you know and and like it's not necessarily a bad thing but being aware of it so that even if you choose to to not lose sight of the fact that you're choosing right yeah because it can you can easily kind of slip over into I'm not making these choices from a personal perspective anymore. They're, they're choices that have showed up here and, and I fell into, you know, kind of deal. But yeah, no, I think yeah. you're, you're asking yourself such wonderful questions. It's, it's fascinating. Thanks so much for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you appreciate now from your perspective at this moment, most about living an unschooling lifestyle growing up, right? Or being just free to live, right? Because like we were talking about before, to label what's unschooling versus, you know, what's living, eventually it yeah. just becomes living your life, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so what yeah, do you appreciate I just, about being able like, to just live your life growing up? <laughs> it, it's almost that. Like so, so much. And I think it's, I think it's time and space mm -hmm. that was really important for me and freedom and, and not being um, constantly, I guess, judged and, and uh, evaluated, I guess, on my decisions and choices. Like I was really, of course we were working as a family, so not totally free. Like I had to, you know, work with my sisters yeah. and within the context, parents, of course, within the, the context. Yeah. But yeah, the freedom to like get to know myself. And then I didn't even know that I was getting to know myself. <laughs> you know, like I didn't even realize that was happening until I was in a situation where that hadn't happened for people. But I think, yeah, the the space to just be the space mm -hmm. to have time to listen to myself and know and like learn how to listen to myself and learn how I work and how I you know to learn okay what brings me joy what doesn't how how do I deal with making these decisions these decisions and and having the time to even think about that, like, okay, okay, you know, I'm like, <laughs> maybe I don't want to take this class. Okay, why don't I want to take this class? Or like, just the time, it's like, so amazing, the time to just be, mm -hmm. and learn how to be, and like, learn how to be in relationship with nature, and my family, and my community, and just yeah, explore. I think if I just yeah. explore. Yeah, all that time to just be a kid and like play. <laughs> like, oh. So that leads yeah. nicely into our last question. As a grown unschooler, what piece of advice would you like to share with unschooling parents who are maybe just starting out on this journey? Yeah, I thought about this question and it's tricky because I think every parent and every kid and every community and every environment is different so it's gonna look different for everyone but I th I think what I came to was like the things that I have valued I think the most from my experiences being unschooled was that um was like my tools kind of that I have now I that I think being an unschooler 
got me and the parents that I have was like, okay, how do I listen and how do I communicate my needs and how do I listen to other people's needs and how do I know how to ask questions when I don't know the answers and, and how do I go into a new situation feeling okay and feeling like, okay, I can do this. And even if I don't know how to do it, I know what my next steps are or how to figure it out or, okay, this didn't work. Where do I go from here? And how to like, how to live and how to, how to love too, like how to love myself and how to love other people and how to, you know, figure my way around a city and like how to take care of other kids or like how to have a conversation with an adult when I'm three (laughs) or like I think knowing how to learn is much more important than knowing math or like knowing how to write an essay perfectly because if you know how to learn then you can go into most any situation and figure it out and know how to have the confidence that that's okay like like teach your kid that it's okay to not know something it's okay to you know be wrong or like make mistakes and it's okay to do these things and that's those are the situations where you learn because if you know how to learn and if you know how to fail then like you can do anything I think (laughs) because if it's okay to keep failing eventually you're gonna get it and you're gonna learn and 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 how to yeah love and like work in a team and and listen listen I think to your kids because I think they'll tell you what they need even if it's not verbally I think that yeah, letting them be the leaders, I think is really important too. Yeah, focusing on like skills instead of specific things and then just following your kid, I think are important things. <laughs> oh my goodness, Adrian! Thank you so much for taking the time to speak <laughs> with me today. It was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you too, Pam. It was really, really nice. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed. It. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It is oh, I so cool. appreciate. And best of luck next semester. I hope you really enjoy your classes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, no I'm excited. Right. Thanks yeah. again. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Pam. Bye. I want an update.